Join me, Mark Windows, for Windows on the World Live every Sunday, 9 to 11 p.m. GMT. Check out our archive and program stream at windowsontheworld.net. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Windows on the World. Yes, Global Takedown Fatigue Syndrome, or End Times Fatigue Syndrome, whichever you like. Windows on the World tonight is going to be looking at everything that's going on in the past five days, and obviously the setup for that. But the BBC have adequately described the mind virus on its main COVID-19 fear page. It says, this virus is unpredictable and dangerous, significantly more dangerous than other viruses that circulate in the UK. We have to have quite a high level of paranoia about it. (laughs) This is incredible, isn't it? This is from the BBC website. Well, it accurately describes the mind virus, but the fuss about the rest of it is being rather overstated so for all those who haven't lost their minds welcome to the show when the covid19 project started i made some parallels with some insightful thoughts from the codices known as the nag hammadi texts which were found in upper nile egypt in 1945 and i'm going to read some of them out again because they are so prescient to what's going on this, was, this is from page 433 of the translated Nag Hammadi scriptures. This is from a section of the codices called The world will be desolate. The godly will be considered mad and the impious will be honoured as wise. The coward will be considered strong and the good person will be punished as a criminal. Concerning the soul and the things of the soul and whatever has to do with immortality, these things will not only be considered to be ridiculous, they will also be regarded as being nothing. Believe me, people like this will expose themselves to the ultimate danger to their souls. Well, there's a lot of people exposing themselves to the ultimate danger of losing their souls, and there's a lot of soulless creatures wandering about in this latest updated step of the global action plan in other words this fake rioting we're going to get onto that tonight well the reasons behind it are obviously part of the plan which is why i say it's fake in other words it's all part of the beneficial crisis but it did say in the nakamadi scripts a new law will be established and the good spirits will depart but the wicked angels will remain among people and be with them and lead them recklessly into what is evil and into godlessness, war and pillage by teaching them things contrary to nature. In those days the heaven will be unstable, and people will not sail the sea or discern the stars in heaven. Well, that's quite prescient as well, isn't it? People will not sail the sea or discern the stars in heaven. Well, they are all looking at their smartphones. Every sacred word of God will become silent, and the air will become unhealthy. This is the senility of the world, godlessness, dishonour, contempt for noble words. The restoration of nature of the pious and the good has no beginning. That's because basically it never ended. Even as is nature, which is his, will has no beginning. So nature has no beginning and the will of nature has no beginning because it's omnipresent everywhere and never ending. I think that's what they're trying to say here. God's nature is will and his will is the good. Well, let's hope so. So the nature of reality may be manipulated for the masses through the beneficial crisis and the cult that wishes to control all. But the eternal cycle of nature and reality will never be changed by the manipulators. That's something to think about because behind all this chaos and this deliberate chaos that is being created there will always be that awareness and natural law and nature will always be there no matter how much they try and manipulate it so I think that's quite a good thought to start the show with it's something I've been thinking about quite a lot recently but the perception of reality which the population see through the media has never been less real Phase two of the lockdown is being helped along by the fake protests and domestic terrorism which the Open Society and George Soros, along with the enablers of global governance, are facilitating right now. As if the Covid action plan was not enough, Soros-backed Black Lives Matter, a -a rent-a-mob hate group which recruits lobbyists for global totalitarianism and is the same mob as Antifa, but with a few more of what the racist, self-conscious drones called ethnic minorities. 
The white racist Antifa middle class Marxist virtue signalling mental midgets are all the same mob. With controlled opposition and deep state backed terror, the operation is always the same template. Have you noticed? I've been noticing the same template going back to the 90s and probably before. But when I became aware of this, when I looked at Occupy, how that was being controlled by the Soros type groups, there is no change in the template. They've just ramped it up a bit. Yes, the mobs have been attacking citizens of the US and destroying property. It is a carbon copy of the fake leftist's Antifa agenda, but highly orchestrated with sleeper cells now being activated all over America. This is a planned domestic terrorist takedown of any remaining democracy by the compliant enablers of the new system. The speeding up through the COVID-19 operation is now being pushed into phase two as early as possible by this Soros army. The video showing the police officer detaining the victim is not very convincing after viewing it a few times. The cop and the victim had both once worked for the same employer, which may be just an interesting coincidence. I've just been reading about that today. Well, after the incident with the over-aggressive cop in Minnesota, the globalist glove puppets have gathered in London. There is no end to the circus and the divide and rule chaos being implemented is template subversion. Soros style. Of course, he's not the only funder of this, but he's the one in front of the open society. The open society with its lots and lots of NGOs that fund all of this nonsense, this fake leftist agenda, which is basically a takedown to get everyone into the sustainable development goals of Agenda 2030, which is exactly what the COVID-19 mind virus project is all about. But yes, the Soros globalist back terror project is all part of the chaos to bring in further control through fear and the divide and rule strategy. The UK is very susceptible to virtue signalling and Soros infiltration. All of our media is taken over by it. The brainwashed puppets and the NGOs are the shadow government enabling the coup. And this is something that we've covered so much over the years. This infiltration through these organisations and NGOs. Just look up the Sigrid Rousing Trust if you want to hear more on the female George Soros. She backs, through her trust, hate organisations like UK's Hope Not Hate. Well, this is the great thing about it, isn't it? Because everything's opposite. So anything that's meant to be against hate is actually creating it. But yeah, the people in the UK being undiscriminating and gullible like these fake leftists, will be all over this virtue signalling fake outrage like a ration they already have been. The useful idiots are chanting, I can't breathe. Well, they can also use that on their climate change, socially distant Extinction Rebellion protests, can't they? (laughs) The Extinction Rebellion protests have also been doing their rounds opposite Parliament, looking even more dumb than usual and standing two metres apart. You couldn't make it up. But of course, the Soros backed organisations have to make it look more real. What's happening in America is absolutely terrible. They're attacking civilians, kicking people's car windows in. These lot should be dealt with as the French were dealing with their own people. I mean, the Yellow Vest got a terrible beating from their own government. But the question now is why are these subversive criminals not being dealt with in the same way? Because. It's part of the global action plan. (laughs) It's all part of it. Well, Trump is standing very defiant in the face of it all. But this is really a leftist takeover. When we're talking about leftism here, we're not talking about the old type socialism. We're talking about the new system of global governance. The National Guard has been called up to help protect the White House from protesters. More than two dozen cities in 16 states have implemented curfews. One of those, Chicago has imposed a curfew starting at 9pm and ending at 6am that officials say will be in place nightly until further notice. So there is actually a video on YouTube of people getting paintballs shot at them because they're out on the pavement. But this is out of control, so you can kind of understand what's going on. I mean, I don't really get what protesting about the death of someone by the police has got to do with looting and robbing everything in sight and smashing shop windows. But go and ask George Soros because he knows all about it.
Minnesota's governor has said he's expecting the state to see a spike in coronavirus cases as a result of the crowds protesting. Now, this bloody idiot was actually on YouTube in a face mask talking through it. You couldn't make it up. Why doesn't he just join Antifa for himself? Well, he probably has. So it all fits together nicely. And they're also using contact tracing to identify the rioters. OK, so that's the introduction to the show. Let's have a look what's going on in chat. Oh, yes, there's people chatting away in there. That's great. OK, this is from Off Guardian and it's May 31st. And the title of it is It's All Bullshit. Three leaks that sink the COVID narrative in recent days. A series of leaks across the globe have further shown the official line on coronavirus does not hold water. Well, we've been covering this for the last two months. Well, ever since the lockdown started, there's been a lot of research going on at Windows Towers and indeed all over the world. So anyone who's still out there with a face mask on in public standing two metres away from their friends, well, why don't they just join the rioters? Well, maybe they probably, well, they probably have, yeah. Well, this article says the science of the coronavirus is not disputed. It is well documented and openly admitted. And these are very good points, actually. I thought it was a good little article. One is that most people won't get the virus. Two, most of the people who get it won't display symptoms. Three, most of the people who display symptoms will only be mildly sick. Four, most of the people with severe symptoms will never be critically ill. Five, and most of the people who get critically ill will survive. The infection fatality ratio is on a par with the flu. There is no science or justifiable reason to the lockdown measures and overall sense of global panic. Yes, we have been saying this for quite some time. Here are the three leaks showing that those in power know that the coronavirus poses no threat and in no way justifies the lockdown that is going to destroy the livelihoods of so many, and of course already has. On May 26, Dr Alexander Meisnikov, Russia's head of coronavirus information, gave an interview to former presidential candidate Xenia Sobchak, in which he apparently let slip his true feelings. Believing the interview over and the camera turned off, Misanikov said, It's all bullshit. It's all exaggerated. It's an acute respiratory disease with minimal mortality. Why has the whole world been destroyed? That I don't know. Well, we do know. Now we do know. Um, most people with a functioning brain cell will have a pretty good idea why. Two, let's have a look what the next point is. COVID-19 cannot be described as a generally dangerous disease. According to an email linked to Danish newspaper Politiken, the Danish health authority disagree with their government's approach to the coronavirus. They cover it in two articles here. Um, in this article, have a look at it. It's on Off Guardian. Go to Off Guardian. They, they put some very good stuff on there. I like the way it's very concise and very simple. And they do very well researched articles. So I would recommend them. So they, they're saying that basically there's a lot of in, interesting information there, not least of which is the clear implication that politicians appear to be pressing the scientific advisers to overstate the danger. Well, of course they are. They did the same in the UK, along with the decision of some civil servants to withhold data from the public until after the lockdown had been extended. Well, of course, when we're talking about politicians here, we've got to remember we're talking about governance, not government. Governance is very different. Governance is from above government. So we have global governance, which is instructing government. Very important to delineate that, I think. But it says the Danish Health Authority continues to consider that COVID-19 cannot be described as a generally dangerous disease. Well, we had the same thing in the UK, didn't we? It's no longer a highly contentious, infectious disease. This is what they said, a high consequence. It's no longer a high consequence infectious disease, as from the 23rd of March, I think. So none of this is exactly secret, is it? On March the 12th, the Danish parliament passed an emergency law, which, among many other things, decreased the power of the Danish health authority, demoting it from a regulatory authority to an advisory one. Isn't that interesting? So this is really what should be done 
especially, of course, regarding Bill and Melinda Gates and, of course, the World Health Organization and all of its partners. But, of course, this is actually what's driving the governance. And with end times fatigue syndrome, which I actually have at the moment, we've been going on about this so long that we've done about half a dozen shows at least outlining all these very things we're talking about now. But there's always new angles. They say three, it's a global false alarm in this article. Earlier this month, on May the 9th, a report was leaked to the German alternate media magazine, Tisches Enblick, titled Analysis of the Crisis Management. The report was commissioned by the German Department of the Interior, but then its findings were ignored, prompting one of the authors to release it through non-official channels. The fallout of that, including attacks on the authors and minimising of the report's findings, is all very fascinating, and we highly recommend this detailed report on strategic culture. That's what, that's what the website's called, so take a look at that. But it says the dangerousness of COVID-19 was overestimated. Well, no kidding. Probably at no point did the danger posed by the new virus go beyond the normal level. The danger is obviously no greater than that of many other viruses. There is no evidence that this was more than a false alarm. During the corona crisis, the state has proved itself as one of the biggest producers of fake news. After being attacked in the press and suspended from his job, the person who leaked this and other authors of this report we're referring to it here from the Dutch report uh, released a joint statement calling on the government to respond to their findings. Evidence is piling up that people in charge knew from the very beginning that this virus was not dangerous. Well, I think that's pretty obvious. I mean, the the, um, the Cummings pantomime and the way Boris Johnson presents himself, the starey-eyed, over-ambitious, over-achieving, nothing, Matt Hancock, basically reading from a script badly. When we were talking about artificial intelligence replacing government, Well, I think it already has. These people are just there because in Britain, people still think they've got a government. So those who are not filled with awareness and understanding of the situation are only able to assist it. And this is the problem we've got in the UK. But the good news is the pot banging and the seal clapping at eight o'clock every Thursday, I think, is in decline because the PR agent who actually thought this was a great idea has said, stop doing it. But the people in this country are creatures of habit, so it may dribble on for quite some time. They may not even know they're not meant to be doing it anymore. But yes, enablers of governance under the fourth world system are everywhere, because we're in the fourth world now. This is the fourth industrial revolution. This is also known as the wilderness of the mind. And this came out of the Rio conference in 92. The Rosicrucian principles of the blending of fire and water the fire being the sons of Cain, who were actually running this project through the banks, and the environmentalists being the water, who are basically the useful idiots of the sons of Cain, the sons of Set and Abel, are the administrators of this new system. That's quite an esoteric outline, but it is the way they see it. And we've covered this in a lot of our previous shows. If you're new to the shows, do go back into the archive and have a look at some of our shows on global governance. A cult that ruled the world. Take a look at that one. That's very interesting. That's about esoteric, theurgical, Rosicrucian Freemasonry. And when you start looking at this stuff, a lot of other things do make sense. But the template that's given to the public is so childishly simple. Well, it's beyond retarded now. I like to use the word retarded because it's actually quite apt and prescient. But basically, these people participate in their own demise and overseeing the demise of others. Now, that's what I object to. They're actually overseeing the demise of other people. Any authority imposing orders through flawed guidelines and improper implementation cannot have standing in the law. It's not possible. There is no evidence that the organisations presenting this event are not administering lies through data manipulation, conspiracy and fraud. And it is believed that none exists. Those are legal statements. Those are statements that I made at the beginning of this that anyone could put in an affidavit. But as we know, what's happening is that the government... The UK government, because we're under global governance, are actually ignoring what's going on in the courts. They're ignoring what's being said by experts. They're just listening to lobbyists. But basically now let's get on to another story. 
we're going to go on about contact tracing, which has started in Northern Ireland and, of course, the UK. Well, in Northern Ireland, they're saying contact tracing could be in place for two years. Now, this is uh, all on the website of the Northern Ireland Department of Communities. Now, if you don't know anything about this, take a look at it, because this is the new communitarian snitching system all done under universal credit. It's the gathering together of all districts into one governance system, basically naming and shaming anyone who's outside the narrative of the accepted public opinion. It says the minister with overall responsibility for the department of the Northern Ireland Department of Communities is the minister for communities. Okay. Just wanted to reiterate that the department was previously created in May 2016 following the Fresh Start Agreement and the dissolution of several departments, such as the Department for Social Dep Development, the Department of the Environment, the Department of Culture, Arts and Leisure and the Department of Employment and Learning, from which several functions have amalgamated. Now, this is interesting because these organisations, these different groupings within the council, these departments were actually scaled down from what they previously were in the 90s. So we had these kind of conglomerated interests put together with change agents in every department. In other words, people who are mentored into the United Nations Global Governance Template. They were all put into these departments and put in charge. But what they're doing now is they're centralising it even more. So this is about the centralisation of power, which goes into more and more centralization and the actual the organizations at the top getting smaller and smaller which is what this is all about which is all about taking away public participation at every level something that we've been looking at for years now and covering in a lot of our shows and yes it says in the communities, Northern Ireland communities, social inclusion, good relations and social change, building a united community. Ah, the no one will be left behind mantra, of course. But it says the first minister, Arlene Foster, has said that Northern Ireland communities could have contact tracing for quite some time, possibly even up to two years. She was speaking on the BBC's Andrew Marr programme on Sunday. It says here. Northern Ireland was the first of the four UK, four UK administrations to roll out a contact tracing program as part of its plans to tackle coronavirus. Now, we also see similar things going on in Wales. This is a psychological program. And in Wales, it's very interesting because the Welsh have an inherent dislike of foreigners, even though they actually make a lot of their money out of tourism. So, the social engineers have used this very cleverly in Wales so that they are encouraging the North Wales police to turn anyone away who's from out of the area. They're also very happy to be locked down in their houses for allowed out basically for exercise. I think it is once a day so they can only go out once a day in Wales. I mean, the whole thing is tailored to people's level of reception to instruction. But well, the Citizen Spy Programme in Northern Ireland has been covered, yeah, before this on many shows, actually. And I know we've got some new listeners in Northern Ireland. So hello to them. I think Padraig got in touch with me today. And uh, thanks for getting in touch. And also we've got Kieran Boyle and several other people over in Ireland I speak to regularly. So, yeah, keep me in touch with that. And of course, yeah, have a look at our interviews with John Waters. Of course, Gemma O'Doherty's in Southern Ireland trying to get people onto the beaches to take back the country. Well, in the UK, it's actually relaxed slightly. The beaches are very, very busy now. But it says here. A manual system is currently being used and she told the programme it's been going well. She said about 30 cases a day are contacted and subsequently those that they have had contact with are spoken to. Now, this is, of course, this NHS programme. It's people who have been tested for coronavirus. Problem is the PCR testing kits are no good. So they're testing their saliva. OK, they may have had a cold. What they're going to say then? You've had coronavirus. We're going to have to go through all your contacts, all your phone book. So everybody has to turn off their Bluetooth immediately. <laughs> it's very important. It's, um, I think the number's an 0300 number if you want to try and block it. I'm going to see if that happens. If they get in touch with me, I'll see if I can block it. But why am I being so selfish and full of hate? 
Well, <laughs> this is part of the problem, isn't it, with communitarianism when you're outside the controlled narrative of public opinion. But she said contact tracing is very much about coming out of restrictions. It's always presented as a benefit. It's testing, tracing, isolating and then supporting those who we need to contact. It's all about support. We are scaling that up and we'll be able to scale it up and down, she added. More than half of coronavirus related deaths in Northern Ireland have happened in care homes. Well, that's the same all over the UK because what they did, I know people who work in old people's homes, they were horrified because people were being decanted out of hospitals with coronavirus and brought into old people's homes. What could possibly go wrong when they're all sat around a plasma screen together about six inches apart? Well, there you go. That's how it works. But basically, she said it was novel and we had to deal deal with it without a rule book she said but wales is the most compliant in the uk driven by the dislike of outsiders i think we've just gone through that that's a note that i was going to put in there but it says here the plan has three parts it includes increased community health surveillance testing it tracks people who have been in contact with individuals who have test positive for covid19 it then helps people to isolate where necessary it helps them you see it helps them it helps them to be locked down and of course phase two the soros war the Antifa and Black Lives Matter, the same organisation in effect, who are now taking to the streets, who don't seem to be observing social distancing, are bringing in phase two. I'm going to be joined now with my guest this evening, David Shaler. We're at a secret location at Windows Towers somewhere in Sussex. David, how are you? Good. Good to be on the show again, Mark. Thank you very much for having me. No one else will. No one else will have me at the moment. <laughs> well, that's all right. Not even Richie out. Allen. Not even bloody Richie Allen. Not really? Speak to me. Won't even return my bloody emails or my tweets or anything. Well, to be fair, he, he might be busy, but I think the problem we've got here is that we have now a situation in the UK where we have a kind of us and them situation and that is of course useful for divide and rule because we then become the haters we become the selfish people we become the people who are put in other li- other lives at risk and this is so transparent but having seen today the ramping up of what's going on with this kind of antifa black lives matter civil war getting underway in america what do you make of it all well, Meg, but obviously being pushed into this situation, I think we can all say, I mean, I, I don't really follow the COVID-19 virus as such. I don't follow those stuff. But what I have been following, obviously, is the implications of all of this. Uh, I'm one of the people who's been talking about this for well over a decade now, saying they were looking for any opportunity in which they could control the population, uh, that when the economic crisis came, they're going to have to take out extraordinary measures to be able to manage that. Um, and obviously, I've been following the fact that the, across the world, we're seeing things or we were seeing before lockdown, a series of what were most likely about to become popular revolutions in places like France and Singapore and Hong Kong, basically. Um, so what we're seeing at the moment with this, uh, well, say the, the police brutality thing yesterday it doesn't really seem to hold up much scrutiny when you look at it. The video of the copper, he's got his knee on the guy's neck for quite a while. The guy's not really struggling in a way you'd expect for someone who can't breathe. I think we've all been in that situation where you can't get your breath. You're not going to panic. You'll flail around. So we don't see any of that either. So it's got all the hallmarks of a staged event as well. But in terms of, as you're saying, where it's all leading, it is trying to uh, stoke up this complete rift between... Um, the people on the ground and the ruled essentially but the people who've seen through it and they are demonising us more and more this is what I've seen obviously I blew the whistle in 1997 which was very early days but I've seen the last 23 years how it's got worse and worse and how they've mobilised more so-called activists to oppose us to not even listen to our evidence to assume that we are somehow mad or we're Russian agents or whatever they've thrown all that stuff at us but at the same time I don't think the people have really bought it now we've always got the squares and the conformists who will obey government they exist in every era every time we have them but what I think is healthy is the number of people who are looking at this and saying well it is bollocks let's go down the beach let's go and have a drink or whatever let's go and sit in someone's back garden And that shows the true human spirit that despite all of this nonsense, despite the fact we're getting a full scale thing from all the media across the board, the press, television, everything, 
that people are coming to their own conclusions about this and they haven't bought it, basically. Yeah, that's very interesting. I mean, obviously, this has been covering up a load of things like the Yellow Vest protests. We had protests in many countries that you've just described. And I think that's a, a very good point to bring in because a lot of stuff was happening. But I think that this second phase of things now is almost as audacious as the first phase in a way, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, when this began to happen, like it's one of those situations where you're watching it unfold, a bit like the war in Afghanistan. You just can't believe it keeps going forward and, and happening because it's, there's nothing to base it on. You know, there's never any evidence, like the Afghan war, the Iraq war. There was not any no evidence to justify any of those things. And exactly the same here. We appear to have a, a virus that's, you know, might be a mildly virulent seasonal flu, but that's about it. However, as you say, that's given the opportunity for all of the social justice warriors to go around virtue signalling and wearing masks, which only seem to make it more likely to incubate disease, I think. Uh, they don't seem to stop diseases. Um, and, and obviously that, that, that really is coming out now in these kind of mainstream so-called protest groups. I think it's becoming more and more obvious to you know the average guy in the street that these are not normal groups of people and normal activists. They are all top down it's all soros's open society foundation and so on um but i say the more people see through that the more draconian measures they've got to take so we've got to think that they may go into further lockdown they may let us out of lockdown for a bit but then we'll probably go into something more severe later on yeah i think phase two probably wasn't going to work as well as they thought so this has now been staged and for anyone who thinks it's not staged well we've been covering these protests for years go back to our show the puppet masters of occupy inside occupy and the bank of ideas this is template stuff and i can bet you anything that some of those agent provocateurs from occupy they may be a little bit older but not much wiser will be part of this and we know that they were already part of extinction rebellion and getting 500 quid a week at least and this is the point so what i've seen in america today it's totally contrived but basically soros He's actually getting the middle classes to destroy themselves, isn't he? That's right. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, these they say there's nothing real about this, about normal protest or anything like that. It doesn't bear any of the hallmarks of how people get together. Uh, we've seen documents. Obviously, I don't know whether these documents have been verified or not, but certainly giving instructions to these agents provocateurs about what to do at certain points. And I say it's a much, much repeated theme. We've seen it many, many times on many occasions. And that's obviously a way of stopping a genuinely popular movement um, actually happening. And when you have, do have a genuinely popular movement, you know, it's very, very different because it doesn't have the same kind of set pieces. It doesn't have the same money coming in top down. The people who are doing it are generally doing it out of love and giving up their time for it. And, you know, so I would compare it to, say, the early 9-11 truth movement, which was a genuine people's movement, trying to get the truth out about something big. That didn't happen then. They used similar tactics to bring us to our knees, basically sending an agent provocateur to say stupid things or whatever, to try and uh, diss our characters. The people who were the leading lights as well, they tried to bring into controversy with the movement in various ways. Um, so eventually 9-11 truth fell apart and that was one of the best opportunities to change the world that ever existed as far as I was concerned because it was the first Well you were getting onto Sky News Yeah exactly You were getting onto the BBC yeah, yeah, weren't you yeah. I think I've yeah. just recently tried to find that on YouTube again it's been taken down as part of the YouTube purge as far as I can see Well yeah we've lost many videos from yeah. the YouTube purge and this is the thing. I don't know how long we're going to survive on YouTube. So please subscribe to us on Spreaker. Go to windowsontheworld.net. Go to the live shows page. Click on the links and do subscribe to us on there because our shows go out on Spreaker, which is a very small platform, but it means that we can broadcast anywhere. I can broadcast from a phone on Spreaker. It's very, very useful for that. But also, yes, do subscribe to us on Spreaker and take a look at our weekly shows, Tuesdays, and Thursdays on Republic Broadcasting Network, 8 p.m. UK time. That's a kind of refreshing alternative to what we do on Sunday. And we'll be back with the live shows on Friday next week. I haven't done one for a week or so. We'll be back with the live shows on StreamYard straight to YouTube, 9.30 p.m. next Friday. It's going to have a short break and I'll be back in a, sh in a, in a few minutes. If you realise how deep the rabbit hole goes... I mean, the people coming out now, even in the entertainment business, saying, I sold my soul to the devil so I could be famous. And you go, Jesus. Yeah. And you look at people and you how did he get famous? He's crap. 
then you think, oh, he must have sold his soul to the devil. Oh, here's, here's Wayne again. He's going to give us all that uh, <laughs> New World Order crap. And you think, oh, why am I wasting my time even mentioning it? You know, it's only in conversation. And they'd rather talk about football. And, you know, you think, oh, what a waste of space. You know, and it's, oh, Manchester United did this. And you think, what a load of crap. Who cares? You know, who cares about Manchester United and Manchester City? And and, 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 and then you look, you think, this is it. They're just programmed. That's going to be their life. You know, women will watch soaps and men will go to football. And then you'll get up in the morning, you'll go to work and you'll do this. And then you'll finish at five if you're lucky. You'll go home, you won't have time for your kids, you won't... And you think, but is this what we're born for? You know, just to be slaves, really. You're just slaves. Join me, Mark Windows, for Windows on the World Live every Sunday, 9 to 11 p.m. GMT. Check out our archive and programme stream at windowsontheworld.net. You welcome to Windows on the World, you know, and the concept of how Earth to run today. Because today, the way the world are run today, they're not running by the law of lives. Because the law of life is just one law. But they create their law to go around the law of life. Ah, welcome back to the show. Yes, my guest tonight is David Shaler. And we're in a secret location somewhere in the south of England. And it's been very good weather. We've been working alongside each other over the past few days, basically exchanging information. And yes, it's kind of frustrating when we've seen all this before, isn't it, David? You know, we've seen this controlled opposition. We've seen these same tactics used over and over again. Well, this is what I can't understand is why particularly activists and people who claim to be aware and awoke on the left are not seeing through this because to anybody who's done a modicum of research, it's quite obvious, a bit like with the, the, you know, the stuff about carbon dioxide being so terrible for the environment, there is no evidence for it. And when you ask the people for the evidence of this damage, they can never provide it, of course, in the same way that they could never provide actually any convincing evidence of planes being used on 9-11, for example. So anybody who does their own basic research has a completely different view of the world than those people who I don't even know why they think they're doing any good anymore. Those social justice warriors, these agitators, whatever. And these aren't the ones who are actual provocateurs. These are the ones that they genuinely yeah. believe that by accusing people of being sexist, racist or whatever, <laughs> that they're going to build a movement that's going to change the world. Of course, that's not going to happen. Um, obviously, my view of this is this is an excellent opportunity for the common law. Um, that people have been given, like mortgage holidays at the moment, rent holidays. And what people need to do, really, is to not pay their mortgages, not pay their rent when it's asked, basically, and saying, look, this is a manufactured crisis. I can no longer pay my way. But it's not right that you people who are earning money from the mortgage, which is unlawful, in fact, uh, should be should be profiting while I'm getting poor and everybody else is getting poor because we can't go to work, basically. Yeah, I think the thing is with this, there's always strings attached. So they're going to want all this money back from the public. And of course, everyone's been bankrupted. So, yeah, in actual fact, I didn't think this was a particularly good idea, but maybe it could catch on. If it caught on, it would be a very good thing if people actually stopped paying into the system until the system actually changed but I think that's kind of wishful thinking in Britain because the level of compliance here is rather stunning to me what I've seen over the past few weeks also I've noticed that people who were meant to be awakened like you were saying I think we had this conversation earlier that you were saying these so-called alternative people they all seem to believe in the climate change mantra I think it's a real problem with people in their 30s who've been mentored into the sustainable development goal of the United Nations and they've been basically brainwashed into this program. I mean, I saw this years ago. I've been covering it for about 15 years, but the way every London borough was taken over everywhere in the country. And now what they're doing is they're using COVID-19 to create wider pavements. I mean, this is absolutely insanity. You know, I mean, they started doing this a long time ago and 
And basically, all of this sustainable development stuff is what we see everywhere. It's a template that's rolled out everywhere. So what we have is a template for everything. In other words, there's no imagination. There is no originality in any of this. And you see that reflected in the people who get involved in these movements, don't you? Yeah, yeah. This is the uniformity of culture, a monoculture. Diversity means everything the same. Vibrant means dull. Empowered means weak. But very corporate minded, very uh, not keen to take individual responsibility for their words or their actions. This is what yeah. you find in big corporations I've worked in, like MI5 and Sunday Times. But also you find in these left wing organisations is people think because they're part of a corporate entity, they're not responsible for what they do. And they like it like that because they don't have to be responsible. It's the same thing with just, you know, blindly accepting the notions they're given from government and from the new world order. It means that they don't, they're not responsible. Somebody else is responsible for this and therefore I'm okay. But obviously what I'm looking at at the moment is this is a great opportunity to be responsible, to do something different. Uh, people can go online to bookofthelaw.org and look at my research and find the lawful ways to avoid paying rent and mortgage and other debts. That would start to change the world very quickly if we had a whole lot of people coming out of this, not paying the mortgage, not paying debts, because that actually hits the other side where it hurts. Protest doesn't hit it, 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 where it hurts because they know how to deal with protest, as we've just recently seen. Uh, but when you start hitting them in the pocket and, and other people would say to their friends, oh, don't pay your mortgage. And that starts to rapidly snowball. We then got them in a position where they have to think again, basically, at the very least. Now, obviously, in that circumstance, they may well lash out and do something stupid. But again, it could be the backlash against that that ends all of this. Uh, because one thing I have noticed during this crisis is that they are loath not to push it too far. They have been quite sort of, you know, softly, softly kid gloves at times. Now, obviously, we go to a second lockdown. It'll be interesting to see whether they become yeah. more draconian or not. Yeah. But I think they know at the moment that if they pushed it, it could go our way very, very rapidly. And I say this is really, to me, it's, it's got to be evidence of the end times. The world has never been in lockdown before as an entire world, basically. Not over something so trivial. And certainly not over something so trivial, no. yeah. I mean, the, 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 the death rate think compared the to the population thing, is yeah. point zero zero three percent or something, yeah. isn't yes, it? Right. Something yeah. like that. Yeah. So it's, this is clearly not some alarming thing like the Spanish flu or, you know, the days gone by the bubonic plague or the Black Death. It's something of a different level and the one we can normally deal with. And that's why I say to all these social justice warriors, virtue signaling by wearing a mask and saying how they're protecting life and so on, and say to them, well, why weren't you doing that last year? Oh, people died of flu last year and you walked around that mask, you might have infected them. Well, a lot more died in 1718 than they did now, but let's yeah. not let the statistics and facts get in the way of their argument, you know, because that, that never works either. You can give these people as many facts as you can summon up. And they will still not listen to them because they'll say things, well, I, I choose not to hear that or that's not my reality <laughs> because we're in a post-truth world, right? Yeah, yeah no, but it, <laughs> and it's almost this idea. It's like a child is saying, you know, I'm just going to create my own reality from what I know, whether it's right or wrong. Yeah. Yeah. There's no consideration of truth. You know, they'll, they'll come to us and accuse us of being egotistical for not listening to them, for example. But who is being egotistical there is determined by who has the truth. And we've done our research. We know we have the truth. And therefore, they're the ones who are being egotistical. They pretend it's not. Oh, the individual must be egotistical. But believe me, joining a group for protection is the most egotistical thing you can do, basically. Yeah, I just want to get on to that for the last bit of the show as well, because the result of these citizens' assemblies has been that basically the public have now voted for their own entrapment into smart cities being put on a starvation diet and basically being taxed literally to death. So if they don't kill you through the other means and the psychological warfare program, they can kill you with what you implement against yourself. Because the citizens' assemblies, it said, heard a, a wide range of evidence outlining the facts for climate and the ecological crisis and the ways in which it can be tackled. Now, let's just take this apart because in Oxford, they the expert that they had was Miles Allen, who got caught lying to a judge in America. 
and basically misleading the court. You can see our shows on that. Don't have to go into it now. But what you've got here is paid lobbyists and computer modelers giving the public information. And the public are being brainwashed into accepting this stuff because they all want to virtue signal. And that is the danger, like you're saying. It's the hive mind at work. These people are being taught not to think and being taught to act as a group through consensus with facilitators leading it. Just like in any protest group, just like in any organisation, just like in any council meeting the template is the same the global governance template is the same however it is applied basically they want to make all new homes carbon zero encourage low carbon dietary choices which means get population on low protein starvation diets to dumb them down ban all cars and take away existing parking spaces by this, they say they're going to create more green space on residential streets. Well, even the COVID-19 has been very, very helpful for this because they've already taken away even more parking spaces because of this virtual reality flu okay so it says force homes to be retrofitted under the epc certificates uh, this is what's going to happen they they say they're going to fit solar panels on as many homes as possible okay that sounds worthy but what this is all about is restricting your access to choice of energy they're going to be restricting the energy consumption and everything's going to be on a smart meter it says there's a campaign to make co2 reduction fun I don't know quite how they're going to achieve that, but brainwashing children and adults with childlike slogans is the usual way they do that. They want to plant more trees and create more allotments. Well, that's more control by the council. Pilot a community energy heating scheme. It means get preferred suppliers to dominate. Install more segregated cycle lanes. Get rid of cars, in other words. Promote and trial car-free zones and days. Exactly the same, get rid of cars. Enable electric transport with infrastructure and incentives. It means demonise real cars in favour of crap expensive ones which can't go any distance and are reliant on the Internet of Things. That's the whole point of electric cars. They don't go anywhere, they're no good. You can't do any long journeys in it. If you want to drive for more than, I think, 90 miles, you have to charge the thing up. Now, that's no good. Can I say that? Yeah, sure. The, the, the car is a great practical thing for freedom. Now, I've worked in MI5, and I can yeah. tell you, when you're following people around a public transport, you've got them under control. You've got them in, on the bus to the next bus stop, or the train to the next station, whatever. Very easy to follow people around like that. Much more difficult to follow people around in a car. Requires... Especially an older car. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. where well, you can't actually mess around the electrics. So we've right. seen a case of that as well. With these cars, I come with the game name the guy now, the researcher... Whose car blew up, uh, Michael something years ago. Anyway, I can't remember his name, but that was very suspicious, as if they'd used the, the electrics of the modern yeah. car essentially to get him to go off the road and, and do him in, basically. Oh yeah, the old Boston brakes thing and all that. Yeah, yeah but this done with through the electronics of the yes. car. You don't even have yeah. to get onto the brakes themselves. Exactly. You so we're going into a new phase now. Yeah, because these they're remote controlled electric cars. That's really really simple. The Internet of Things controls everything. Smart motorways. Well, they're death traps, aren't they? We know our shoulder. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, crazy. the whole thing is. Really, really transparently obvious to anyone who can actually see it. I mean, I've got a bit of burnout with end times fatigue syndrome at the moment because I've been doing so many shows, especially the American shows. They're going great. In fact, they're actually a bit of a tonic because the people there do have a sense of individuality. And you can tell that there is a large proportion of Americans who will not take this. They will not actually take this when it comes down to it. However, in the UK... It seems to be more disappointing to me. What do you think on that, David? Compare the US to the UK. Yeah, well, the, the thing about what's broadly different at the moment between Europe and the US is essentially it's trusting government, isn't it? Uh, post Second World War, the Americans went off in one direction, the Europeans went off in this direction of the, the welfare state and all this kind of thing. And therefore, the government became a good thing. It was providing health care that people hadn't had, like my grandparents, who were very working class. It was providing an education up to the standard you could go to, including university for free. So people really didn't believe in the government. But this is what they will do. They will give you these baubles and sweets and things or whatever to keep you there for a period of time. And obviously, because of the Second World War, the elite had to remain quiet for about 25 years. So we have, during this time, you get incredible social progress, rising wages, all sorts of things going on that are good for the country. Um, 
I'm, you know, I was born in the 1960s when we had like one nation. People believed in the same things and so on. But then as soon as you go into the 1970s, America comes off the international gold standard. They can start printing money, making insane loans that destabilizes economy and so on. Um, and, and then they're back again. And, and more or less, it's been a trajectory since then to where we are now, of essentially eroding rights, yeah. eroding our standards of living taking away our freedoms, taking away our time in terms of making us work longer. Even though in those days, they were obviously, the way they sold the tech was to say, well, you know, you're probably doing a three-day week, a two-day week, because the technology will do things. And that's how it should work in these circumstances. And this is, again, where we know there's no real increase in people's wealth. is because people, if they were genuinely increasing their wealth, would have more leisure time. And those people don't. Even billionaires are in, in hot to the banks and therefore controlled by the banks. They're not free agents, basically. Well, this is a very important point because what we see around us in the UK is apparent wealth everywhere. In other words, most people, it doesn't matter whether they're on benefits or whatever, they have these four, well, five-foot plasma screens on their walls. They have a new car. And this is the apparent wealth that you see. But most of it is on high, higher, really, isn't it? It's not even theirs. That's the point. So... Basically, what you've got is people who are in debt and don't really own anything. The whole point of the fourth industrial revolution is exactly that. So most people are already in that place already. They're already targeted because they do not have the ability to stay outside the system. And the ability to stay outside the system is now paramount. Because the only people who are going to survive are the ones who do not get bankrupted by this, who are able to carry on through it and who have some insight into what's actually going on. Yeah, have some insight, but also some ability to be able to look after themselves. And say, fortunately, I've managed to be on an eco project for the last few years. So we are in a position where we have been able to grow our own veg and uh, keep animals like chickens and so on for eggs. Uh, we've got sheep there now. Um, so we are in that position. But obviously, many people out there living in cities who've grown up in the modern world have no idea about these things. Uh, but again, that's been the encouraging sign. As a gardener, I've realised that the local garden centre has run out of compost. You know, people are getting back on the land and growing their own veg again and want to source decent veg. This is why they want everyone out of the country. This is the whole point of the smart cities agenda. And yes, people in cities are generally very ignorant as to how things are produced. You know, their idea of getting the food in is to go to Waitrose. And this is the this is the real problem with the smart cities thing is because what happens is people become not interdependent. This is, the interdependent just means they're a hive mind, but they become completely dependent. And that is the battle. The battle is, yes, I want a car because it gives me freedom. Uh, I don't want to be trapped in a smart city and only be able to cycle. And the 30-somethings and the people who've been sold this as an agenda, really do not get this. They don't understand that their freedoms and their rights and liberties have been stripped away. And this whole agenda has forwarded it on a, an, a, a speed, at a speed that I could not have possibly imagined. This has been the most audacious takedown in history that's happened over the past few months. We've been covering it every day, pretty much. And the difference in the response of countries is quite all part, well, it's all part of what was planned because there was meant to be a difference in how countries actually responded to this. For instance, places like Belarus, it's actually not even visible. People are just going about their business normally. There are some countries which are quite unaffected by this. And the whole point of the fourth industrial revolution is they want to take down the West. What is the West, Britain and America, basically? These rich nations in the eyes of the UN have to be brought down. Everybody has to have the same. It means poverty for all. When they say no one will be left behind, it means no one will be left out of poverty. No one will be left out of the influence and control of this new global governance system. Have you got anything else to add to that, Dave? Uh, yeah, the, essentially the reason they're targeting Britain and America is that we have a tradition for rights over government. Now, this is a situation you've never had in China or Russia or anywhere like that. That's never been a concept of, a, of somebody having rights over government. We have in the West, and particularly in Britain and America. And that's essentially why they are targeting Britain and America the most, because they don't like that idea of rights. 
And when they talk about the depopulation agenda, I think a lot of people in the West think, oh, it'll be those people out in Africa and India. But it's not. They're focusing the depopulation agenda on exactly. the West. Exactly. Because right. we are the biggest pain in the arse. We're the ones that are likely to say to them, no, this is nonsense, basically. Um, so, yeah, so that is why we are being targeted in this particular way. Um, and this is what I can't understand, even with the people I'm living with now, is why people still have this faith in government. Yeah. I mean, the government has failed to manage the economy properly, failed to manage the currency properly. We have to pay a fortune to go to university now. In fact, we're so in debt that that's the, the whole thing is being driven uh, by trying to get revenue in to make sure you can pay off the national debt. Now, when I did the research on national debt 10 years ago, we were paying a billion pounds a week in interest alone, the national debt. Now, since then, we've had various quantitative easing of probably another trillion pounds. Um, so we're probably looking at some ridiculous payment every week on the national debt. And the Tories, remember, took years to make austerity cuts of 15 billion. Now, Given it was saying one billion a week ten years ago, now it's probably two billion a week interest. You could probably have made those savings in a couple of months, basically, rather than uh, uh, just simply by not paying the banks, rather than taking thing, services off poor people or taxing other people more who can't afford to be taxed. Um, so I say I don't understand. And again, again, in things like the light of seven seven, where there's been no inquiry, and nine eleven, where anybody who's done their own research knows no aspect of that story stands up to any scrutiny. And yet you go to government, and they'll still tell you the official story. And and I say that's everywhere. It's every part of government, every department, every newspaper, every mainstream media outlet. They have such a suppression of the truth, and they say so they've done this to me. They've done it to you over the years. But those people who stand up. This is how it works when you wonder how they get these lies out about COVID-19. Is anybody who's a refusenik, anybody who says, no, hang on, there's no evidence here. They go after you. They just destroy your life, your reputation, everything. They can. They'll take your home off you so that you are not in a position to criticise them anymore. And you stand as the example. They can say, well, look, mate, you don't agree with us this time. Look what happened to him last time. Look at Shayla now. He's living, he's going to live in a field. He's going to live in a cattle shed uh, because he tried to take us on. And we, we had him, basically. Um, but I yeah. say, but in those circumstances, I don't know what sort of psychopath you have to be to still believe in government. You know, they got it wrong in Iraq well, I think some and of Afghanistan, are, are but when it's yeah. Syria as well, yeah. you kind of think, well, no one's learned a lesson here. That's not a normal human thing. As a human being, we learn, we develop, we learn from mistakes. But the trouble with the corporate entity is it puts new people in who haven't been there before. So the mistakes are not learned from. Yeah, there's those who are complicit compliant and complacent those who have their noses in the trough to a greater extent than the others and then you have the useful idiots the useful idiots at the moment are these useful idiots of the left of the so-called left they're not really left it's just an extremist cult that's being backed by globalists these are the enablers of what's happening these are the people who are taking away your rights these are the people who have been funded to do it and these are the people who are happy to do it and that's the interesting thing so we've now got it in the uk they are trying to start this civil unrest over here it's spreading out throughout america and of course it's absolutely stage managed and contrived and it is for the benefit of of the global action plan and what they've talked about for years is a new Marshall plan that was the whole idea of the United Nations Agenda 2030 program is a new Marshall plan and the way they implement that is through increasing chaos you can look at this in several different ways if you look into things like Sabbatean Frankism if you start looking at the occult nature of Rosicrucian Freemasonry you can see where a lot of this came from that's not extraordinarily helpful in the present time in the present moment however the main thing is to be able to see through what's going on and act accordingly and this is where inner integrity and inner truth comes in so there's those people who've got integrity and inner truth will be able to see it but those that haven't won't and they will be swept away and in my view they have already lost their souls to this because if they're going along with it and watching a five foot by four foot plasma screen and seal clapping every week then they have lost their minds and that's the danger we talked about that years ago about the danger of people who lose their minds at these protests with these events we've talked about yeah 9 11 7 7 take a look at that series we did it was completely ignored really on youtube it's called 7 7 revisited and you can find it on an old youtube channel called land of the free myself and david and nick colostrom went up to reading and we plotted the whole of the story of 7 7 do go back to that because they repeat this stuff over and over again of course terror 
the war on terror became terror on the cheap. It became it went from um, these audacious events like 9-11, 7-7 to basically car crashes. You know, hired cars smashing into Westminster Bridge or knocking over a few pedestrians. Unfortunate for them. But that's not terrorism. And terrorism can be done with the complicity of the state or it can be done by the state. What we're seeing is our state is now under global governance. So the terrorism is being done through the state with complicity of the state. Every one of those people in government, so-called government, uh, Boris Johnson, Matt Hancock, Schnapps, whatever he's called, all the rest of them, it doesn't matter. There'll be a new one along any moment now. Point is that they are enablers of what's going on. There is a principle of law yes. that supports this position because people will think that perhaps they because they're being silent or whatever they're not really responsible. But a principle of law says the truth is all too frequently overpowered, and those who do not disapprove approve. So the principle of consent in law here works in our acquiescence. Yeah, acquiescence. Yeah. If you are consenting to a conspiracy, you are part of it yes. by your silence. So you have to extricate yourself from that conspiracy, which is what I did when I left MI5 and blew the whistle. If I just left MI5 and not told anybody that MI6 had funded Al-Qaeda, I'd still be part of that conspiracy. Yes. But I made a big song and dance of it to extricate myself from it. And I actually think that was part of their plan, I think, because they were trying to get me to uh, take a job off them when I left. Obviously, kept my distance from them, but then they can feed you into things. They've got blackmail over you, so you step out of line. Oh, he was involved in a terrorist plot, you know. And then next thing you know, you're on trial for bloody murder or whatever. You know what I mean? But I say I blew the whistle on that. That caused all sorts of problems for my life. But it means I've squared it now with the law, my conscience, and clearly whatever belief you have, God, basically. And again, that's what I'm saying in these end times. This is why it requires a level of courage. And getting yourself out of politics and into the spiritual, the new spiritual activism is which you look at yourself first and think, what the hell am I doing in this society? It's insane. It's dropped wife phosphorus on children, for God's sake. And it's shown no apology for that, no remorse for that in any way. I don't want to be part of that society. I don't care what they do to me. But as Christ says in the Sermon on the Mount, you know, if you are persecuted for standing up for truth and justice, so much the better because you will have a greater reward in heaven amongst the saints, basically. Yeah, when this started, I felt very fortified by it. And there was a few things that actually happened. People were going through a very intense crisis, some friends of mine, and they relied heavily on me. And I felt very fortified by the whole thing. I'm getting a little bit fatigued at the moment because I've been doing so many shows, but it all comes down to inner integrity. And when you've got that inner integrity, then you're not compromised in any way and you can't be compromised. It actually makes life a lot easier, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It makes life a lot happier. When you start trying to make those compromises, you start to get bad karma and so on. Whereas if you know you're going to be judged, you don't go there with that behaviour because you know it's going to be bad karma. Um, and I say, I just wish other people could take that look at themselves and understand the evil that they are promoting by accident almost. But by paying their taxes in there, by uh, supporting that those states in any way, they are part of the whole murder depopulation agenda. And obviously, I say we are very, very far into the end times now. It's not just the Judeo Christian culture that's saying that. It's the uh, Hopi Indians, various Native American tribes. Well, yeah, we were talking to us, these Australians, uh, Stephen and Evan Strong, and that was really interesting. But what was kind of amusing, uh, something good to finish on, actually, maybe a bit of uh, a kind of witty ending, is that one of these Aboriginals who was prophesizing this sort of end time situation also prophesied sized the hoarding of toilet rolls <laughs> five years before it happened so that's kind of that's a bigger that's bigger than the mayan prophecy if you that's ask right, me absolutely. that's much bigger than 2012 because they actually got that right <laughs> yeah. on that note i think we'll leave it there and i'll be back on tuesday on rbn 8 p.m that's republic broadcasting network help us out on patreon or paypal if you can in these troubled and uh, challenging times and i'll be back next week and yes, look at the website, go back into the archive because there's so much stuff there for people who've just started listening to the shows. Thanks to David and see you next week. Cheers. Join me, Mark Windows, for Windows on the World Live every Sunday, 9 to 11 p.m. GMT. Check out our archive and program stream at windowsontheworld.net.